So welcome back. And now we're going to discuss some questions from past papers in regards to the diagnostic application of isotopes. This, I believe, is from lecture 12. So this means we're not going to discuss the positron emission tomography just yet because we're taking it lecture by lecture. So this is just going to cover the material discussed in lecture 12, which means this is going to discuss uh, the application of isotopes uh, and also gamma camera and uh, maybe accelerators. So let's get started with some, with some true or false that I was able to muster from past papers. And this is always, uh, this as always, is a good time to pause this video and work on these questions on your own. Very good, let's get started. First of all, the mesosol stall experiment is an example of the employment of radioactive isotopes for research purposes. And to who of you that uh, saw the video in regards to the mesosol stall experiment, that proves the semi-conservative replication of DNA and employs an isotope of nitrogen, namely nitrogen-15. Nitrogen-15 is a stable isotope of nitrogen. It does not uh, spontaneously decay. It is not radioactive. False. Moving on. All isotopes used in research are radioactive. And really, if you look at this statement, which is false, then you would know that this one is also false. And if, if this sounds stupid to you, this actually comes up quite a bit. You would be surprised because, because students quite often get confused when you're talking about things that may seem very, very simple. And maybe they just, they're just trying to set us up. So in this case, they are. Uh, let's move on. Uh, radiopharmacon features a stable isotope that diffuses throughout the body. And really, a radiopharmacon is something that you really, really, really need to make a point to understand fully. And a radioisotope is, uh, and radiopharmacon is namely a radioactive isotope, radioactive isotope, radio, radioactive isotope, radioactive isotope, plus a, bio, a biologically relevant molecule. And what we need to know is two things. First of all, it employs a radioactive isotope, radioactive. And second of all, the relevant biological molecule is going to get to, to, get to the body and, and go, to a certain, go to a certain organ maybe or check a certain compartment or volume or, or gland or whatever. I wouldn't say it diffuses throughout the body. Maybe, maybe some would say, yeah, it diffuses and then it selectively, uh, selectively targets a certain area in the body. But let's just say that even if they were saying a radioactive isotope and then they say diffuse throughout the body, I would have, I would have issues with this, with, this, uh, with this specific statement. But they made, they made it clear that the, this statement is false just by saying radioactive. Although I would have had incidences with this definition as well. I wouldn't say diffuses throughout, but that's just me. Moving on. Particle accelerators can generally be used to accelerate uncharged particles in an electric field. And really, if you don't really know the idea with, uh, with particle accelerators, maybe you forgot about them. An electric field really affects charged uh, molecules or charged particles. And if you're not charged, how is an electric field really going to affect you? So definitely, uh, we're, we're using an electric field to, to accelerate charged, charged particles. Very good. So this would also be false. Very good. Oh, nothing is true. Look at that. Moving on. And now this, this features some definitions. And, and you would quite often find definitions. And this entire, uh, this entire question is a copy paste from the 2011 second self-control test. That this, this featured over 20 points. Over, or rather, over 20 points. Over, over 20 points. So this is quite a lot, especially if it's, over, if it's out of 60. This is over a third of your, general, um, of your general credit, you can say. So please, pause the video now and see if you can figure it out. Very good. Let's get started. Explaining the term radiopharmacon, I, I've done it quite often. Uh, really, it is an, a radioactive isotope paired to a biologically relevant molecule that has a specific function in the human body and can, be, uh, and can be traced. And really, a tracer is a radiopharmacon 
that we use to trace, or rather, a radiopharmacon that ensues a specific function in a specific, uh, in a specific place in the biological system. Could be the human body, could be a guinea pig, maybe. And then we can trace the radioactive residue or the radioactive uh, radiation uh, that is, that is uh, emitted from that specific area in the biological sample. Very good. Gamma knife. And it really is important to understand that the tracer could only really, or as far as I know, has only really been used not only in samples but in biological systems. Really, we're talking about animals and human beings. It's not really used for, I would say, a, a specific sample of skin maybe taken out of something. This really needs to have an entire, an entire system. So a gamma knife is basically, I would say, a therapeutic instrument that utilizes cobalt-60, cobalt-60, that generates uh, gamma radiation. And uh, we use this to radiate tumors inside the cranium, inside the skull, inside the head, inside whatever it is that you want to call it. And particles accelerator, I would just namely say the particle accelerator uses alternating, uh, alternating electric uh, current, and it alternates via radio radio frequency pulses, and that actually causes the acceleration of ions through, uh, I, if we're talking about linear accelerator, but basically through a series of these, uh, of these successively increasing charges or alternating charges. Some particle accelerators use alternating charges, some actually use uh, uh, successively increasing charges, not a big deal as long as you know that these are ions. I'm just I'm giving you the key keywords here ions, uh, alternating current, alternating current, radio frequency pulses, and accelerating. Very good. Moving on. The gamma camera, and, and really to understand these answers that I'm going to try and, uh, and produce, you really need to understand the inner workings of a gamma camera. So if you don't know that, I would revert you to the, videos, the video that I made about that. So briefly explaining how a gamma camera works, from the beginning I would say that a radio pharmacon that emits gamma radiation is ingested or injected to a patient, and that radio pharmacon ensues into a specific region in the body. And I'm just going to, to go through the key phrases as well. Radio pharmacon, radio pH, radio pharmacon, ingested or in, in, in injected into the, into the patient's body and, and uh, migrates towards migrates towards a specific area, specific area or gland or organ or whatever you want to call it. Very good. And then it, from there it sits down and it emits gamma radiation. Gamma radiation is being absorbed or rather being absorbed through, it goes through the collimator, through the collimator, goes through the collimator, is absorbed by the scintillation detector, scintillation detector, And is, and is interpreted into a current by the photomultiplier tube. Very good. And then we get a reading as to where is the vicinity of that radiation source. What is the element responsible for generating the actual reading on the device? Explain its function. And really, this is the photomultiplier tube because this is what takes an electron and gives me current from it, or from a few or electrons or numerous electrons. And the way it works is really it's in the minimals. You have an incident electron uh, liberated from a photosensitive cathode, uh, accelerated through diodes and successive uh, voltage difference, and is multiplied until it gets to uh, to the end uh, to the end of the photomultiplier tube, and there it is interpreted as current. What element is responsible for the lateral resolution of the device? And the answer is the collimator. And I actually uh, actually stated that in, uh, in, the, in the video I made. And if you really want to make, it, wanna make a, uh, some sort of sense out of it, the collimators really determine what type of angles I am going to get if, if my radiation source is here, let's say, and it's throwing radiation everywhere. It's only going to be able to get through maybe if it has a specific, a specific angle. And it prevents all the other angles from going through. So it gives us some sort of lateral, and this is, this is really what they mean by, by lateral resolution. So if the collimators were really far apart, you can imagine that our resolution is not going to be very good. It's not going to be very good. 
All right, moving on. Explain where is the radiation source located. Give an example to an isotope that can be used. What should the con consideration for choosing such isotopes? So really explain what radiation source is located, source is inside, inside the body. And, and there, are, there are techniques that employ uh, outside of the body. So it's really, this is really an easy game, an easy game, because we're ingesting the radiopharmacon. Very good. And give an example to an isotope. This would be technetium-99. Technetium, I believe it's TC-99. And what should be the consideration for choosing such an isotope? First of all, it needs to be a gamma-emitting gamma isotope. Or you can say undergoing gamma decay, gamma, gamma decay, also needs to have a short lifetime. Short lifetime in order for, for, our, for our subject to not be radiating, walking around radiating gamma out of his own body for days on end. We should really need to have that for the duration of our examination. Very good. So hopefully you found it quite helpful. I really, I really do believe that these are all the collective questions that you can ask about the gamma camera as far as the depth that we were taught. So hopefully you found this helpful. See you in the next video.